Welcome back to all Anno 1800 fans. Today we have a super exciting video where I'm going to recap all of the new mechanics, all of the new secrets that have been shared in the stream today. Over on Twitch we had for a bit more than one hour a nice stream where they showed a lot of things from the new DLC, the free updates and the new scenario. I'm going to try to cover it all but of course if you think I've missed something important don't hesitate to share in the comments below also if you have questions and I'll do my best to answer. As I said, we'll cover both the new DLC in the impact that it has for the new world, but also all of the origins. We're also going to cover the new scenario, the Clash of Couriers. And remember, to get this new scenario, you actually need to buy DLC 11, either through the Season Pass, Season 4, or just buying this DLC. And then lastly, we're also going to cover the free updates, which everybody who has Anno will get, regardless of if you have DLC 11 or not. So if you have been following a bit the news, you may already know that DLC 11 is quite linked to airships. And indeed, we are going to get a number of new airships. I'll cover that, but that's not all. There's many other things. The first big thing is that airships, there was only one before, one type, and you could only have it if you had the Passage DLC. You could only build them in the Arctic. Now that is over, you can build airships pretty much everywhere at least we know in the new world and in the old world for sure and from what i understood in the old origin it will be possible too so there's a new anger to build them on top of that to build them you used to need the gas from the arctic now you can also use a new gas which is the helium and it's not just those angers that you can build in the new world and in all of the other regions but it's also platforms and with those platforms comes three different new modules that you attach to the platforms. The first one is linked to mail and we're going to talk about it. The second is the commuter pier and the third is the item transport depot. Let's cover very quickly this last one because that's an easy one. The item transport depot basically it will enable you to transfer in less than a minute items between two islands that both islands need to have an airship platform but it doesn't have to be islands in the same region. So it can definitely be, for example, one island in the new world, one island in the old world. You will put an item, any item that you have in that first island into this depot. And as I said, it will take basically less than a minute to charge, to be there. And then when it is charged, it is immediately sort of teleported into the other island. And there you can pick it up, take it out. So two scenarios where I see that really useful. One is, Obviously, on the island where you have your research institute, you're producing maybe a lot of different items, having an item transport depot there and then sending it wherever it needs to be sent. The second is if you, you know, you used to have, for example, a coffee island and you had a lot of items linked to this coffee on one island. And now you want to sort of delete that island and transfer all of those items to another one to make another coffee island somewhere else or you can sort of put them all into the transfer and get them transported to the other one. The second in the middle is definitely the big one because this is the commuter pier. This is one that many have been expected for the new world. There is already a mod that does it if you don't want to wait, but basically, you know, something that we already have in the old world where when you connect two different islands with two commuter piers, their workforce is shared, right? So you can have one island without any houses, the other island with a lot of houses then put two commuter piers and now both of these islands have sort of the same workforce that you can use in both. This will be the same based on commuter piers now with airships instead of uh, ships but that's basically the same and again this is obviously inside a region with between islands in the new world. And then the first of this module is called the airmail sorting office and it is basically linked to this new resource called the mail. Let's talk first about this resource. How is that unlocked? How do you make it? This is, in my understanding, the DLC where this is unlocked the earliest because it comes at early artisan or early obreros. And you will have two things, either a postal service or a mailbox. The difference is their cost and their radius, right? Obviously, the mailbox has a smaller cost, smaller radius than the postal office and any houses that are inside this radius will start to create mail. It can be your classic houses like your artisan, your journaleros, obreros, but also, if I understood correctly, all of the tourists, the scholars, skyscrapers, 
everything you name it it creates mails at least that's my understanding now this mail that is created is sort of local mail this is local mail in this island right but if you send this local mail to another island in that same region which has an air mail sorting office the module we just talked about then this mail becomes a regional mail right so it's a sort of a second type of resource so if you wish it's mail level two and now if that mail is sent to another island not just in your same region but in another region then it's be called global mail or mail level three if you wish and the three types of mail three different resources that you need to store and it's actually worth noting that it will be a different storage capacity than your island storage the storage capacity for mail will be linked to uh, your postal service and buildings like this and not just to your normal uh, capacity these goods are linked to a new type of needs and this is not just for dlc 11 this is actually part of the free update everybody will get a new types of needs which are called lifestyle needs those lifestyle needs can be basic things like work clothes for john aeros or as a sop for somebody else so it is goods that we're already producing also goods from many different dlcs so they've created interactions between regions but on top of that there's also the three mails those three mails of course will be only available for the people with that dlc versus the other lifestyle needs could be available for everybody and when you fulfill one of those needs for example the mail you will get more money and more population but what's important is that it is free population it is population that doesn't consume resources and from what i've seen it could be quite powerful it will of course depend on a couple of things for example the rate of consumption of those new needs but it definitely provides a new way to get a lot more population into a denser uh, area so for min maxers again that could be great but also for beauty builders who want to really get condensed cities they can now play with that new functionalities of lifestyle needs now to make or to use many of the things that i've just discussed you're gonna need to produce three new resources and it's actually linked to new mines that is a big thing the first one is aluminium the second is lubricant and the third one is helium the aluminium will be made in a new factory in the new world which will take bauxite and coal this bauxite is one of those new mines. some of you may be worried a new mine don't worry you don't need to restart whatever games you have when you launch them and you activate dlc 11 it will generate a few of those bauxite mines across your island that you already have it could generate problems to you where those mines are in places you don't like but at least you don't have to completely restart it's also worth noting that it seems you need 220 generators for these mines so that's quite a lot the second resource is a lubricant where you're gonna need fish oil salpetre and you also need trees around that new building so it's not that easy and you'll need it to make helium or to be more precise you'll need it for your helium mine which is again another of those mines another new resource that will come on top of the lubricant you'll actually also need clay for these helium mines and this is 120 obreros so again, I repeat, you won't need to completely restart. All of your islands that you already have in your current games will get those new resources. In this DLC, you won't get new islands or the islands won't get bigger. This is in the next DLC where we know they are going to basically expand the map. It's not the, the islands themselves that you already have that are going to get bigger. And therefore, you're going to have new islands probably on the outside of the map. So these are the new big functionality linked to the airship platform which again you can build in the new world but also in the old world and as i said you also have the airship anger with a lot of new airships in total you'll be able to build eight different airships including the one we already have so it's seven new ones if you wish the reality is actually only five really different types but for two of these you can decide if you want them armed or not so it's 5 plus 2 equals 7 plus 1 we already have equal 8. Each of these will have different number of cargo slots, cargo items, cargo drops, which is something we're going to talk about, and of course minimum and maximum speed. The two sort of military one, for example, are quite fast. I saw for the RP one, uh, a maximum of 51 knots, 
adds quite a lot with two cargo slots and one item cargo. The Montico was also two cargo slots but three cargo item if I'm not mistaken. And on the other side you have sort of more transport ones which will be slower. For example the Hermes is only 36, the Pegasus only 31 knots max. So you know they'll, they'll be slower but they will have more cargo slots. For example, the Hermes, if I'm not mistaken, was three cargo slots, the Pegasus five, and the Zephyr eight. So this one is a huge one, similar to the Great Eastern in terms of uh, cargo. You'll of course need different resources to build them all. I won't go through them all, you know, but things like those weapons, if you want the arm ones, cells, and things like this, and either helium or arctic gas. You can use both, and that will have effect. From what I understand, Basically, if you use helium, it's sort of the standard, there's no effect. And then if you use gas, you will get both positive and negative effect. If I'm not mistaken, it could be things like you use arctic gas, they will be faster, but they will be more vulnerable or things like this. Now, two of these can be armed with the weapons. These are air-to-air -air weapons. So these are weapons to attack other airships. They won't be able to attack directly your arbor but we'll be able to do it in another way. We'll talk about it later. Before I get to that, I did want to mention, so how else are we going to shut down airships? Again, first of all, you can either build an RP or a Manticore that will be armed with air-to-air -air weapon. Then second, you'll be able to build anti-air cannons in your arbor. That's a new type of cannons that will be able to attack those airships. And thirdly, we get a new monitor variant one of those ships with anti-air weapons. So you'll have three ways to defend yourself against other airships. Because yes, everybody's gonna get airships. You get airships, the AIs get airships, even pirates will get airships. Now earlier I mentioned the cargo drop slots. This is again another thing new for the airships. There are five different types of drops we can do. The first one is bombs and this is how your airships will actually be able to attack arbors. The second is sea mines. You'll be able to drop those mines uh, across you know, your water, protect your arbor for example or, or protect your trade routes. Then there are two that are buff up or down. Up will be something you want to do to you, yourself or to an ally. Down is something you probably want to do to your enemy. And then the last drop is you can drop water. For example, I'm guessing mostly when you have a fire in your city, you drop water. So you'll create those drops and then you'll put them on your ships. And then you can send your ships with quite a cool targeting system where you can plan where the bombs will, you know, will, will land including also an escape route after that. Two other things I wanted to mention, we just talked about some new anti-air cannons, some, a new variant for the monitor. There will actually be other new ships and new defenses in the free update for all. If I'm not mistaken, we'll get two new other ships and two new other defenses. For example, for the defenses, we'll get one that is a flamethrower and one that is an anti-armor one. So the idea is that each of the defense will be really focused on a type of ship, on a type of vehicle to attack. And therefore, the idea is if you really want to have a good defense, you need a bit of all of them. And similarly, if you want to be a good you know, attacker, you're going to need your fleets to be a lot more diverse than before. Instead of having only ship of the line, instead of only having dreadnoughts, if you're playing mods or those type of things, right? You'll need to have a bit of everything to face each of these different types of weapons. And the other thing I did want to mention is during the whole stream at the top left corner of the map, there was this airship button which they never covered. And even when the question was posed, they sort of escaped that question. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below if you think this is important, if you think this is nothing. I haven't made up my mind yet. I think I need to sleep on it. But now let's talk about the other important thing, because if you follow my channel, you know, I actually really like those new scenarios that have started. I have on the channel tips and also playthrough to show you how to get the gold medals in each of the previous scenarios. As with the previous two, it seems that if you finish it, you will get something, probably a skin, a new type of skin for airships. You'll get the different medal based if you only win the derby, if you win it and defeat all of the challengers. And last, if you do all of this, plus do it in the time limit of, it seems, three hours. So of course, as soon as this new DLC drops, and by the way, they did not confirm a specific date. I think the latest is still end of August, but we don't have a specific date. You can expect on the channel 
live stream and videos on these new scenarios to try to get the gold medal. Something quite different this time is we are starting with an island. We already have an island with some people on it. This will be based on the new world, but as always, there's a few changes. So while we have, for example, John Aleros and Obreros, their needs are not exactly the same as the typical one. They're usually actually a bit easier. The map seems also quite a lot bigger than usual. There will be other players, traders and even pirates on the map. There will be quests and items to find across the map, so be interesting to discover it. At the same time, also a number of islands that you can colonize. But what's very interesting is that there will be no arbors for all of those islands, so you'll need to only use airships. Like the plateaus in the Arctic, if you want to reach them, if you want to transport resources back and forth, you'll have to use your airships and you'll probably do it both to access new fertilities but also to be able to play with the males. Right? Remember that to get level 2 males you need to transport it from one island to another. So I think this is what we'll have to do for sure because then we'll have to do challenges against other players. We don't know much more yet about these new scenarios but I'm sure it's going to be again a great new experience. What do you think about this scenario? What do you think about this new DLC? Are you excited? Are you disappointed? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also join the Discord community if you want to continue this discussion. Thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to smash the like button and I hope to see you next time.